Welcome back to 3 Minute Theology. As we continue through the Second London Baptist Confession of Faith, we come to the end of the first paragraph of the first chapter. We began the sentence last week. Therefore it pleased the Lord at sundry times and in diversified manners to reveal himself and to, and to declare his will unto his church. And afterward, for the better preserving and propagating of the truth, and for the more sure establishment and comfort of the church against the corruption of the flesh and the malice of Satan and of the world, to commit the same wholly unto writing, which makes the holy scriptures to be most necessary. These former ways of God revealing his will unto his people being now completed. So, after God revealed himself at different times and in different ways, he has committed that revelation wholly unto writing. Everything that God wants the church and the world to know about him and about his word has been written in the Bible, the most necessary of all books or of all revelation. The confession states that God has completed his revelation. He is no longer revealing himself through dreams, visions, and prophets. He has nothing more to declare than what he has already said and recorded in Scripture. Therefore, we shouldn't be looking for further revelation or secret mysteries. We should be diligently applying ourselves to studying and understanding and obeying what God has given us in the Bible. God had his revelation written down for two reasons. First, for the better preserving and propagating of the truth. Because God's word has been committed to writing, it is better preserved. Oral transmission of information is much more prone to change than written transmission. Because the words of the Bible have been written down and copied again and again, we can have very strong confidence in the reliability of what we possess really is the Word of God. The commitment of the Word of God to writing also assists in the propagation of the truth. We don't have to travel to one of a few prophets or priests or learned men to know what God has revealed. We have it in the book. Each Christian can read and share what's found in the Bible, and the Bible itself can be distributed to others so that they can see for themselves what God has revealed. The second reason, for the more sure establishment and comfort of the church against the corruption of the flesh and the malice of Satan and of the world. This, the church is constantly under attack. It is being attacked even today, even in the United States. It is attacked by the corruption of the flesh, the malice of Satan, and the malice of the world. The world and Satan hate the church and will do anything they can to either destroy the church, hinder the church's mission, or, or change, pervert the church's mission from that which God has commanded of her. And even from within the church itself, the corruption of the flesh tempts us to stray from what God has said. In the face of all this opposition from without and within, we look not to ourselves for strength, not to our subjective feelings, not to our possibly flawed recollections. We look to the written word, and there we find strength and comfort. Yes, the world says this, but I look to Scripture and I'm reminded that God says that. Yes, people within the visible church say that the church should devote itself to this, but I look to God's word and find that God calls his church to do that instead. In every controversy, in every dispute, every confrontation, the church looks to the most necessary written word of God. We thank God for the written word of God, for the preservation and propagation of the truth and the establishment and comfort of the church. If it were not for the written word of God, the Protestant Reformation would have been absolutely impossible. It was most necessary. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, keep on and God bless.